This is the sound that will signal the second coming of Christ. It's the sound from a shofar, a musical instrument that dates back to biblical times. Don Heist says what comes out of this ancient Hebrew horn is the voice of God. Don reveals his best kept secrets about how to play the shofar in his latest DVD and tells stories about what happens while he plays before live audiences. Well, Don Heist is here with us now. We welcome you to the program, Don. Thank you. Thank how you did you get me. started doing all of this? Well, I stumbled on it quite by accident. We were at the Revival in Pensacola, Florida in ah. 1995. And I saw the shofar being played by a man, and it just intrigued me. God had been preparing me already for this by, as a child, I played a trumpet. So it, it led ah. me up to that. After that, I got my hands on a horn and just started playing, and then... I guess they say the rest is history. I just, w w my wife and I prayed for years to find out uh, how the God would use us and how he would take us to the next level, so to speak, using his horn, the voice. You, you, th you think that you're just going to pick up one of those things and blow into it, but you say you play it, you don't blow yeah, it. Yeah, I, I try to play it more like an instrument mm -hmm. rather than just a, may I use the rough phrase, uh, Noisemaker. Yeah. I mean, it is the sound well, of, of rejoicing. Well, some people it is a noisemaker, <laughs> can I just Well, say? it is the sound of resurrection and the sound of deliverance. But see, when God's voice comes out, it really doesn't have much to do with the person playing the horn, except that, you know, I mean, they have to have clean hands and a pure heart. But the point is that it's God's voice that comes out the end of the shofar. So miraculous things happen when God's voice touches you. It's true, and I, I've been at, you've played here for Rosh Hashanah for years now. Mm, eight years. And when that shofar blows, something rises up in you and everyone rises. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just, it is a call. <laughs> it is, and, it's, and what that is is a spiritual uh, change in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. God's voice goes throughout and changes the atmosphere. Yeah. So hearts are, are melted and healed, yeah. softened. Physical healings have taken place, um, mental healings, financial. Worship breaks out too. Oh yes, you know? definitely. <laughs> so the sound, of, the sound of Christ coming out the end of the shofar is very much like a celebration all yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. How God decides to use his voice is of course, a, well, not a surprise, but a different mm -hmm. every time because it, it's really about seeking God's yeah. will. You said that you played the trumpet, and you know, there is a certain way. I have a shofar. I am a noisemaker. <laughs> shofar <laughs> blower, not a player. But, but as a trumpet player, you know how to position your lips and how to breathe to get, but you yeah. don't have any, any notes that you can play. So how does one play the shofar? Well, the shofar, just like any brass instrument, has what they call parcels. Parcels are different level pitches. Mm -hmm. So um, the shofar will always play the root note. It'll play a, play a perfect fifth and it'll play an octave. Really? And on a good day, I can hit an out of tune <laughs> third above that. Wow. But um, it's really not about what I can do as much as what God does through the horn yeah. and what's emitted out of that horn uh, in terms of healing and deliverance. You played at a conference in Florida Oh, a little bit ago, yeah. and a prophetic word was given there. Tell us about that. Well, I was on the uh, platform speaking or playing as uh, with the worship team, and uh, the uh, the prophetic speaker was walking in front. And as he walked by, his eyes and mine met, and I immediately sensed a fear of I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know what was coming, and uh, he said to me, "I have a word from God for you." And I listened, and he, in front of all these people, he said, whenever you blow, the cancer must go. Wow. And right after that, in fact, at that very conference, God had healed uh, a man with golf, golf ball-sized lumps in his chest. Good grief. Eyes were opened that were blind. Deaf people began hearing. By the end of the conference, people had cell phones lined up on the front edge contacting a loved one or an unsaved person that, that they were praying for. Wow. And, and, you know, by continuing through the conference, uh, I believe God touched a lot of people. Wow. And since then, God has used uh, the sound of the shofar, his voice, uh, in many ways for healing and deliverance. The shofar has been used by God's people for a long time. What's the significance of it? Well, it goes back to Genesis 22. 
uh, where Abraham is taking Isaac up to mm -hmm. sacrifice him. And of course, the scriptures tell us that suddenly there was a ram in the thicket. Yes. And uh, that's the animal that Abraham used to sacrifice in place of Isaac. Now, that being said, that we know now is a four picture Four of pictures, Christ. Sure. Mm -hmm. But what they're saying in the scriptures are what many people believe is that the one an, a horn on the, on the ram was played at Mount Sinai for Moses when he sounded, when he heard the great voice behind him like a trumpet. Yeah. That was the voice of God. And that, that, that sounding of the horn was one of the horns on that ram. The other one, it said, is uh, in waiting for the second return. So when wow. Christ comes back, we'll hear that other one play. And now, I thought all um, all shofars were ram's horns, but you actually play a, is it a kudu? It's a kudu antelope, um, and, and they are a little easier to play than the curved ram's uh -huh. horns. The ram's horns up at the point are more football shaped where we put our mouth on it. Uh -huh. it makes it very difficult to play. Uh, the kudus are more round. round, and by having different length of the kudu horns, we can pitch them in different pitches, coming back to playing the shofar, because what I can do is pick the horn that's in the key of whatever really? the, the worship team is playing, and I can accentuate different places. That's why I say I play it rather than just blow it, but it's still all God's voice coming out, sure. and it's I many times wonder uh, what God's doing in the atmosphere. Yeah. I'm just playing the horn, but yeah. what's God doing? Mm -hmm. You know, I love to hear it when people email me or whatever and sure. say, this is what God did that day, you know. Well, we're mm -hmm. gonna hear you play in just a moment. Will all the horns that you're using be kudu? Those that I have with me today are all kudu horns. Okay. Uh, they're different lengths because they're pitched differently. Yeah, amazing. I'm gonna let you go over and get ready while I tell okay. people about uh, how they can hear more of what it is you do. If you'd like to hear more of his work, go to CBN.com. He's got a wonderful DVD uh, called Combo. It's called Shofar, the Voice of God. Uh, it's available. You can go to our website, find out how to get a hold of it. But Don's going to play for us today. Coming up in a few minutes after this, we're going to have your email questions. One viewer asks, will I get to heaven even if I sin? So bring it on's around the corner. But before we do big, bring it on, I want to bring you Don Heist playing the Shofar. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> 